not give up. That is the essence of leadership. And here on energy, the first thing to note is you have to find your own energy first. Only then can you energize other people. By the way, energizing other people, uh, a team of people, and energizing a whole organization is much easier. And it's much learnable and teachable. This part, how do you find your own energy, nobody can teach you. And this is the hardest part. So the question is, how do you find that energy? What are those sources of energy in you? Where, what, what kind of source of energy did Gandhi have because of which he never gave up? What kind of sources of energy did uh, Howard Schultz have because of which he never gave up? Compassion. Sorry? Passion? Yeah, where does that passion come from? Passion Mystery. is an expression of energy. Where does that come from? Dream. Dream, yes. Anything else? The first one is exactly that, clarity of purpose. There are two sources of long-lasting energy inside of you, two sources. One of them is clarity of purpose, the results you want to create. Because, you know, there are many, uh, many finite uh, sources of energy. If I say, I give you a million dollars, do it, I say, chances are you'll do it. A million dollars is a lot of money. If I put a gun at your head and say, run as fast as you can, uh, faster than you've ever run before, you will because you don't want that bullet going through your head. One is the anticipation of gain, and the other is the avoidance of pain. Both are examples of what I call rational energy. It's good for me. I will gain, or I will avoid pain. Uh, rational energy, uh, there's the, uh, the other kind of energy that I'm talking about, which Gandhi and Schultz and others have, is called emotional energy. Emotional energy says, not because of gain or avoidance of pain, I want to do it because my heart says so. And uh, researchers at Harvard and other places have proven without doubt that emotional energy, I want to do it because my heart says so, is four times more powerful than rational energy. Four times in terms of output produced. Yeah? That's the kind of energy I'm talking about. So one of them, one of the sources is clarity of purpose. Anybody guess what the other one is? Compassion. Sorry? Passion. Compassion or passion? Passion. Passion, yeah, passion for your purpose, yeah. But there's one more source. So, uh, if you know the destination you want to go to, that energizes you. But if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there, right? So that's one. The other one, what's it? What happens if somebody is motivated only by their purpose? Just purpose. I don't care. I have to achieve. What can go wrong? Sorry? What if he fails? Of course, okay? so risk of failure is always there. But what, what if somebody is so convinced about their purpose and they don't think about anything else but purpose and say purpose, 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 what can go wrong? Not exactly. The second uh, uh, source of, of energy, the kind of energy I'm talking about, is values. Clarity about values. Right? Because purpose without values gives you Hitler. Purpose with values gives you Gandhi. Okay, so the question I leave unanswered is, what's the right purpose? Well, if you have the right values, you determine what the right purpose is. That's the point here. You get clarity of purpose, it will give you energy how to move forward. You get clarity of values, it will tell you what you need to do when there are no right or wrong answers, when you are really, really tested. Does that make sense? So what, were, what was Gandhi's purpose, do you think? Freedom and equality. When he was in South Africa, it was about equality for all people, right? Regardless of color. And then later on in India, it was freedom. <coughs> and then what were his values? What were his deeply held values? Humility. Nonviolence. Humility. Humility. Truth. Right? And you saw that he lived his entire life on those principles. Achieving his purpose through his values was the point. What, was, uh, uh, what, what were Howard Schultz's values? There were two of them. Remember? Respect and inclusion, right? And he built a whole company and runs a whole company based on those two values. What is his purpose? Create a company my father never had the chance to work for. Give people respect, give people dignity, and make money at the same time. Okay? How do you find this kind of energy? How do you find clarity of purpose and how do you find clarity of values? You know, I've, I've, I've interviewed a lot of very, very important and very, very powerful people in this world, all over the world, and I've asked them the same question. Sir, man, what's your purpose? And you know, very few of them are able to say, my purpose is blah, 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 blah. Very clear articulation. 
the average answer, regardless of how big they are in terms of stature, okay, military leaders, political leaders, corporate leaders, I should say bosses, not leaders. Sir, what's your purpose? Hmm, that's a very deep question. <laughs> I haven't thought about it. Hmm, nobody's asked me that before. And the question I want to follow up with, which I don't do normally, is you manage a company with 50,000 employees all over the world and you were waiting for somebody to ask you what your purpose was? Unacceptable. You call yourself a leader? But you'll be surprised how many people go through life without any clarity. The question about values is even more interesting, sir. Ma'am, sir, how, what are your values? What do you give me here? Okay, let's see. Well, uh, integrity, uh, passion, uh, honesty, hard work, and they go on and they're making up that list as we speak. If you haven't thought about it proactively, it means you don't believe in this. Right? A lot of people will say, I say, what's most important to you? My family comes first. My family is most important. Absolutely. It's the easiest thing to say. Obviously, you haven't thought about a larger purpose and larger values in life. So, what's the easiest thing to say? What's most important? My family. It's a nice thing to say. It's a societally correct thing to say. What I'd really like to test people one day on is, let's say, you say family is the most important thing to you, your wife, your kids are most important to you, your parents. Okay, I give you an option. Yeah, hypothetically. You can become, tomorrow morning, the world's biggest dictator. Out of 7 billion people, you know, China and India is now one country, so 2.5 billion people, in this country, you are the absolute dictator of this Chindia. Okay? You can do anything you want, nobody can ever take you off this power, you can do anything, and of course you can do everything to the rest of the world as well, because you're the most powerful dictator in the world, right? Only one condition, you've got to give up your family. I would love to see how many people will really stand up and say, yes, my family is more important. It's a hypothetical situation, it's an extreme situation, and I, it, 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 the point I'm trying to make simply is this, a lot of people, so another question we ask is, are you honest with yourself? And most people say, yeah, of course I'm honest with myself. Why would I be dishonest with myself? What a stupid question. <laughs> most of us are not honest with ourselves. That's what we found. Most of us are not. We say one thing without believing in it. And when we say it enough times, we start believing it, it's nonsense. You gotta get clear about your purpose. You gotta get clear about your values. That's the foundational step of creating a better future. That's the foundational step of leadership. Does that make sense? How do you do that? Uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go very deep into this, but, you know, a training program, a leadership seminar is not going to give you clarity of purpose and values. I can tell you that. There's no table exercise that I can do with you. Uh, it says, okay, come on, talk to your neighbor, fill out this two-by-two two grid, and by the end of half an hour, you'll have your purpose and your values. There's no such thing. I can only give you the long cut because there is no shortcut. If you're serious about finding your purpose and values, and you should be, because all the great leaders that we've studied, all the great leaders, they have one thing in common, they have clarity of purpose, clarity of values. You want to get clarity of purpose and values, you will need to answer uh, six questions, very, very honestly and very, very deeply for yourself. These answers will not come that easily, because these are difficult questions. But, if you can answer these questions, the first three lead you to clarity of purpose, and the last three lead you to clarity of values, uh, you will not only find the basic foundations for leadership, but you will find that you, you will have created the basic foundation of a, of a fulfilling life, whether you want to be a leader or not. They look very simple, these questions on the screen, by the way. They're some of the toughest questions that you will answer if you are honest with yourself. So just a couple of pointers. Uh, what few things are most important to me? The first question. You know, really, really honest. You want to be the world's most powerful, the world's most richest person? Absolutely okay. There's nothing wrong with that aspiration. You just want to be the world's best mom or the world's best father? There's nothing wrong with that either. But you need to be clear. Here's what I, what I can suggest you do. Make a list of all the things that are of value to you. Money, fame, fortune, love, or making a difference, whatever it might be. Make a long list. And then ask yourself, what if I have to give up two? Which can I give up? Scratch those up. Ask again, if I have to live without another two because they're taking it away from me, which ones would I give up? Keep doing that until you have only two left on your, on your, on your, on your list. You'll learn a lot about yourself with this exercise. Yeah? Uh, second one, uh, do I want to lead a simple life rich with everyday small pleasures? I don't want to be this big leader thing. 
Do I want to achieve great success in an individual endeavor? I want to be Raja Fendi. Um, or do I want to lead others towards a better future? I don't care about myself. Which of the three do you want? You've got to be very, very clear. Because most companies make the big mistake of promoting people based on individual performance. The reason why you have so many bad bosses all over the place is because they're all promoted because of technical excellence. They, have, they don't know a clue about how to manage other people and how to motivate other people. Right? So that's why if you want to lead others towards a better future, you want to be sure that that's entirely what you want to do. Because people who are motivated by themselves, and now they have to manage a team of 50 people, they make the team of 15 miserable, but they make themselves even more miserable. Yeah? So, you know, uh, the first one, lead a simple life rich with everyday small pleasures. I have a friend of mine, I've known him for 25 years. He, uh, when he started his first job uh, in, a, in a government company uh, in Austria, he said to me on one evening, we were sitting, uh, shooting the breeze, having a drink, a bunch of us. I was doing my MBA at that time. Uh, this is 26 years ago. He said, you know what, some of you are going to become great leaders, some of you are going to become scientists, writers, whatever, whatever. I want none of this. If I can hang on to the same job 25 years later, I'll be happy. Because what I want to do, I want to spend all my time out there in nature. I, he's a paradigmist. He said, I want to spend as much time as I can flying. He's a scuba diver. I want to spend as much time as I can diving. I don't want any of this nonsense. You know, he makes beautiful videos when he goes up uh, uh, with his paraglider, comes, up, comes down, edits those videos, and they catch all the friends. So see this video. Every video, he's so excited when he's showing it to people. Look at that bird, how beautiful. Look at that sunset, how beautiful. His eyes are lit up, he's smiling, he's like, after 10 such videos, I didn't want to see the next one because to me, every sunset looked the same. Every sunrise looked the same. But to him, everyone, 26 years later, this man is still doing it. He's in that same company, by the way. He's still doing it. Every week I get an email from him. The title is always the same. The best flight of my life. <laughs> How can every flight every week be the best flight of his life? But to him, it is. He's very clear what he wants. That's the first one. Second, achieve great success in an individual endeavor. If you want to be Lord of Federal, there's nothing wrong with that. You want individual fame and fortune. And work towards it, no problem. Arnold Schwarzenegger, we all know who he is. The governor of California? Yeah. Uh, he, he, he was asked, why don't you take bodybuilding as a sport as against football or hockey, a team sport, right? So he said, yeah, I used to play soccer. I was a defender. I would come all the way from the back of the field and dribble against six people from the opposing team, take the ball all the way to the top, right? And then I had to pass the ball to center forward. And then he puts it into the goalpost with one kick. I do all the hard work, he gets all the credit. He said, no, 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 no. I want the hard work, I want the credit. And that's why I chose bodybuilding. Nobody can take this away from me. <laughs> I don't know whether that's right or wrong, but he's totally clear about what he wants from his life. See what I'm saying? And if you want to build a future for other people, then you better be clear with question number three. What results do I want to create? What better future do I see? Like Howard Schultz, I want to create a third place in people's lives. I want to create a company my father never got a chance to work for. I'll make sure nobody's left out and I'll make sure everybody's created to discover. You better be clear what you want. Because you are going to motivate people not because of who you are. Uh, well, because of, you're going to motivate people not because of what you do to people. You're going to motivate them by the power of your purpose and by the power of your values. Those people who believe in your purpose and your values will give you their followership. Yeah? Other modes of motivating people, giving them a little bit more money or threatening them are all temporary. Does all this make sense? Similarly with emotions, uh, with values, uh, you know I told you that emotional energy is four times more powerful. Where do emotions come from? Emotions happen to you. Now listen to this very carefully. Emotions happen to you when there is either a match <coughs> or a mismatch between one of your deeply held values and the situation at hand. Did you understand that? So something, you're walking down the street and you see a scene happening on the street. And if that scene is either a match or a mismatch between one of your deeply held values, you're going to feel emotion. If somebody is beating somebody up mercilessly and you believe deeply in the value of justice, you're going to feel sad, you're going to feel angry. Mismatch between the deeply held value and the situation at hand. If you see somebody working tremendously hard and honestly, and hard work and honesty is your value, you're going to feel happy. You see what I'm saying? So, what I'm trying to explain to you is, unless you understand your values, 
unless you have really clarified what your values are, you're not going to be able to recognize your emotions. If you don't recognize your emotions, you cannot produce positive 4x energy. And if you cannot produce positive 4x energy, you cannot be a leader. Because you need that 4x energy to not give up. Do you understand the connection between values, emotions, and emotional energy and leadership? If you cannot clarify to yourself honestly what my values are, not going to happen. Yeah? So these six questions, honestly, I don't have any more to say about this because there is nothing more to say. I don't have a formula. I don't have a quick fix to how to get to these answers. You're going to have to think about this. Some people take years before they get to the right answer. But I can tell you, at your stage in life, the sooner you start thinking about this, the better you will be. It took me 10 years. Please don't do that to yourself. Find your purpose, find your values much earlier. I was very, very successful in the eyes of society before I found my purpose in life. I was a trader. I was trading derivatives. I worked for investment banking firms on Wall Street. In my time, that was not a criminal activity. Okay? But I made tons of bonuses. I made tons of money. And it was a glamorous job. Wow. You're a rocket scientist. You make multi-million dollar decisions in nanoseconds. You know, party time, people say, what's your view on the ball? What do you think this is going to happen? Great. Very successful in the eyes of society. I can tell you, once I found my purpose and my values and started doing what I do now, which is writing books, uh, communicating with people, studying uh, great leadership, I am much more successful. Much more successful. I don't make anybody other kind of money I used to make, by the way. But I am much more successful. So it took me 10 years. Don't, not, don't do that to yourselves. Ask these questions sooner. That will be my only request for you. Yeah? Because that's what great lives are made up of. I'm not making this stuff up, by the way. You know, um, uh, this is all based in neuroscience. Uh, for any stimulus,